For those who can, please rise for today's reading of the gospel. First scripture reading we're going to read is from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and uh, Salome brought spices so that, may, so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the tomb, which was, or the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples, Peter, uh, he's going ahead of you into the Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Second reading is going to be from the first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 11. Now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By the gospel you are saved, and if you hold firmly to the world I preach to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared at Cephas and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some may have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostle, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. You know, someone told me this uh, a story the other day. It seems that there was a, a couple who had made plans and had saved forever to make a, a special trip to the Holy Land. It took them years to save and plan for this amazing adventure, and the day finally came, and they packed and got into their, uh, got onto the plane for their destination. But in an unexpected surprise, the wife's mother joined them on the trip. They spent almost a week touring the historic sites and visiting the most sacred places on earth, but then something happened. See, one of the last days in Jerusalem, the woman's mother had a severe heart attack and passed away. The woman was distraught and didn't know what to do. I mean, how do you handle things like this? What happens when somebody dies overseas? A couple talked with a local funeral home, and they told them that they had a couple of different choices. They could have her mother's body shipped back to the United States, or they could have the burial and the service right there in one of the local graveyards. And of course, there was a price difference between the two. It was $5,000 to send her back to the States, but 500 to have her buried there. Seemed like it was a no-brainer to the funeral director, but he got a shock when, after a few minutes, the husband came in and told him that they would be sending the body back to the States. He had to know why they would spend so much money to send the body back versus having his mother-in-law buried there. And he told him that the decision really wasn't that hard, he had heard about somebody that was buried a while ago in that area, and three days later, he came back to life. <laughs> I just can't take that chance, he said. <laughs> Will you pray with me? 
Oh, gracious and loving God, God, we come uh, with joy in our hearts, with celebrations in our minds, and and so, God, I ask that as we, as we spend some time in, in this message, that, God, you would speak to us. That you would speak not in the story that I just spoke, but in the stories that, that we hear now. God, that the words that I speak would no longer be my own, but that they would be your words. Your words for your people. And all this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, today is the third day. Today is our third day. It's the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed, yes. We have been traveling on this journey of Lent through uh, looking at the resurrection through the eyes of those closest to Jesus and the difference that it made in their lives. We looked at Mary Magdalene and Simon Peter, Thomas and Cleopas and his friend and Paul and, and Jesus himself. The resurrection certainly made a difference in their lives. Has the resurrection made a difference in your life? Does it make a difference for you today? Today is your third day. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with our third day? Well, let's review just a, just a brief moment here. Let's take a look over the last six weeks and uh, our journey to the resurrec- resurrection and our third days. Mary Magdalene reminded us that Jesus calls us each by name. That while we might search for Jesus, he also searches for us. That is good news. He calls us out by name and invites us on this journey with him. However, with this calling comes a charge to share the gospel message with all of those around us. That's what Mary did. We need to tell the story of Jesus' third day and what difference it makes in not only our lives, but in the lives of so many others. So many others around. Simon Peter lets us know that we are never too far from God, that God can't redeem us. Yes, Peter denied Jesus three times in just one night, but redemption was coming. And redemption was coming on that third day. No one, and I mean no one, is beyond the grace of God. We are all redeemable. This is through the power of the cross. This is the power of the resurrection. This is the power of our third day. See, Jesus, through his life, death, and resurrection, offers us redemption and forgiveness. How can we share that message of grace and forgiveness to those around us? How can we accept it for ourselves? Thomas reminds us that doubts and questions are okay. It's okay to ask questions, to wonder about the truth of something that you've heard. It's okay to walk the valley searching for truth so that you understand. Doubt is not the enemy of faith, but a path to a deeper faith. Let me repeat that again for you. Doubt is not the enemy of faith, but a path to a deeper faith. However, we must understand that doubts and questions, if confronted when we're alone, when we're by ourselves, it can lead to despair. But doubts and questions, when asked in the safety of community, leads to hope. And we're going to do that next week. Not this week. I'm not going to put you on the spot right now. I'm not going to put myself on the spot right now, but next week. I mean, you've already submitted a number of questions for me to answer during our worship service next week, and I look forward to to addressing as many of those as I can in the context of community. And it's not too late. If you got a question, if one is popping up right now, make sure you pick up a slip of paper and fill that question out so that it can be uh, submitted for next week's service. Cleopas and his friend were on their way to Emmaus, and they encountered Jesus in the midst of hopelessness. Have you been there? They had lost all hope after the crucifixion. All hope was lost. If you remember their words, they said, we had hoped. We had hoped, which means it wasn't there anymore. They just wrote everything else off. They thought it was the end of the line, but they encounter Jesus along the the journey, and their hope is restored. They realize 
that all hope is not lost, that it is still there. The resurrection reinstates the hope that we, will, that we all have in the everlasting that is the life that is promised. Paul then gives us an example of a transformed life, no matter what we've done, no matter how far we think we've traveled away from God, no matter where you think you are today, God, through the power of the cross, can transform your life. Paul was persecuting Christians, even allowing the death of Stephen, and yet God can use him. Can I tell you, God can use you in the kingdom God can use each and every one of you in the kingdom. Don't you see? The resurrection changes everything. It changes everything. I, I want to share a brief video with you. Uh, now, trust that when you start to watch this video, the words are a little small, but understand that the woman who is reading the story is reading the words that are on the screen, so that might help you a little bit. But, but go ahead and, and play that clip. Easter is coming, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today. Death has the last word. It would therefore be foolish to say that the life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. Why? Might makes right. Power is superior to compassion and despair is stronger than hope. So I refuse to believe a man can come back from the dead. Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. Resurrection is a false hope. How can you say an empty tomb changes everything? Don't you see God loves the world is a lie? Money is God, and the one who dies with the most toys wins. I will tell you what I tell my children. There is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. Many of us simply do not believe that God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. That wasn't the end. <laughs> oh no, we can't leave it there. Oh no. Okay, there. Then God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. Many of us simply do not believe that there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. There is no mystery in everyday life. And there is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. I will tell you what I tell my children. The one who dies with the most toys wins and money as God is a lie. God loves the world. Don't you see? An empty tomb changes everything. How can you say resurrection is a false hope? Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. A man can come back from the dead. So I refuse to believe despair is stronger than hope. Power is superior to compassion and might makes right. Why? The life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. It would therefore be foolish to say that death has the last word. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. Easter is coming. Easter is here. Easter is not just coming. Easter is here. We, can't, we couldn't leave it as she finished that paragraph because where was the hope? But then turning it around and reading it backwards reinstills the hope and the promise in the future. Easter is here. The resurrection changes everything. Today is the third day. And so let me remind you that on this third day, Jesus calls each one of you by name. 
Jesus calls you out. He's calling your name right now. He offers words of comfort, words of assurance, words of resurrection, of new life. Jesus is calling you in the midst of your pain and loss. He's calling you in your moments of despair and worry and fear and anxiety and all of that other stuff that is just weighing you down. He's calling you not only in those situations, but he's also calling you out of them into a new life, into a resurrected life. Jesus is telling you that it doesn't matter what you've done because with his resurrection, you are forgiven, you are restored. It doesn't matter what you th- if you think that you're beyond the grace of God. Jesus reminds you that you're not. That you're not beyond the grace of God. Jesus calls out to you and wants you to know that you can come to him with any of your questions and any of your doubts. And he reminds you that God will be with you always especially in the middle of those questions and those doubts. This hope is what we have, and it's the anchor for our souls. All hope is not lost. It is securely placed in the assurance of our salvation and our eternal life. And finally, let me remind you that you are saved through the power of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. You are saved by grace, grace alone. It is a gift that is freely given. It's freely offered to all of us. But we are also saved for the purpose of spreading the good news and working for the kingdom of heaven. We're given the opportunity to participate in the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Today more than ever is a day that we gather as a community to celebrate the life that we have been given. It's a day of redemption, a day of restoration. We come together as a community with a a great variety of faith journeys. We're not all on this same journey. We're not all, well, we're all on the same journey. We're not all in the same path as we're going because some of you have different life experiences and you're coming from different areas in your life. Some are celebrating the resurrection, knowing that Jesus has saved them and has offered this new life. Some of you have come believing that it might actually be true. It might be true, but wanting to witness it for themselves. They've got to witness it. And some of you have come. Maybe you were dragged here by your parents, by your grandparents, or, or somebody else who truly cares about you, but aren't sure that you can believe all of this. You have doubts. You have questions. Let me reassure you that everyone in this room, everyone who is worshiping online with us, at some point in their life have had doubts and questions. We all have them. You are not alone. We are on this this journey of hope together together as a community. You see, this is the third day, and we can all experience this transformed life together. This video might help you understand just a little bit more, so go ahead and play that second musical video. It is our third day. It is Resurrection Day. Christ is risen He is risen indeed. So if this is our resurrection day, if this is our third day, the question comes to each and every one of you, sitting where you are, whether it's at home, here in the sanctuary, the question comes, and it's the same for all of us. And so as we get ready to approach the table, here's the question. What are you going to do with your third day? What are you going to do with your third day, with this resurrection day that you have experienced? Will you pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, we come to you on this resurrection day, on this Easter day, and we are grateful for for not only the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but also that hope and the promise of the resurrection of each and every one of us. But God, we know that, that we have work to do. God, that we are saved by your grace, that we are saved by the, through the power of the cross and, and the resurrection of your Son, but we are also saved for the work in the kingdom. And so, God, remind us. Speak to our our hearts. And give us that 
Give us that encouragement and tell us what exactly you are desiring for us to do with our third days. At all this I ask, in the power of your Son's name, amen. We're going to...